Hi, I'm Steve Selig, founder of Fit Test, and the topic of this video is on silent myocardial ischemia and silent myocardial infarction directed towards exercise professionals. This is this can be fairly confronting for an exercise professional when we can have these major um, cardiac events occurring without the appearance of adverse signs or symptoms, which can make it quite challenging. However, we these clients still will benefit very much so from exercise interventions, exercise training programs. And so we should still try to provide exercise services for these clients. You'll notice on this title, on this title slide that I haven't said how to provide safe. I've said how to provide safer, safer exercise services for these clients. Because as I said, uh, these clients can be a little challenging in terms of managing uh, safety and risk in the setting of the absence of the normal sets of adverse signs or symptoms. So just a quick uh, reminder of what is um, myocardial ischemia before we move on to silent uh, myocardial ischemia. So myocardial ischemia is defined as insufficient oxygen rich, rich blood supply to the heart where the demand exceeds the supply at that metabolic moment, if you like, for example, in response to exercise. So it's when demand exceeds supply at that moment. Now, if you, if you think of exercise, um, obviously demand has gone up. Um, if supply doesn't match it, then the person will can develop angina. Whereas at rest, the demand, which is much lower, uh, may be met by the supply. Now, you'll notice I've used supply rather than blood flow, although using the FIC formula for the heart muscle, um, the VO2 supply is dependent on coronary artery blood flow times oxygen in the uh, arterial blood in, in the coronary arteries minus coronary artery blood flow times oxygen in coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is quite low. So the predominant um, variables that come into oxygen uh, supply to the heart, whether the supply is insufficient, very much so coronary artery blood flow, which is the main topic of this video, but also arterial uh, oxygen concentration, of which the two main components are hemoglobin and oxygen saturation. I've, I've given um, uh, other produced other videos on this topic. I'm not going to dwell on it here. So in summary, myocardial ischemia in, t in terms of this video is really largely dependent on coronary artery blood flow. When that blood flow falls below or isn't, isn't sufficient uh, to meet demand, the person can develop myocardial ischemia. So stable angina first is transient angina associated with exertion or stress. For example, exercise induced or stress induced pain or discomfort that typically radiates across the chest, arms, neck and or jaw, maybe even the back. And there are also other typical signs or symptoms such as unexplained breathlessness or disturbed breathing such as dyspnea, sweating, especially if it's across the forehead, nausea and vomiting. Unstable angina can occur at rest. And uh, in the situation of unstable angina, it requires uh, urgent medical intervention follow-up. It may single, uh, signal an impending myocardial infarction or something worse than that. So now we come to my silent myocardial ischemia. The definition is that this is when myocardial ischemia occurs in the absence of any adverse signs or symptoms. And that's why these clients uh, do become challenging for us under certain circumstances. Um, but it's not to say that we can't work with them, but we've got this challenge of the absence of signs or symptoms. The risk factors for silent myocardial ischemia, are, well, here it is again, women, um, they can have atypical angina, atypical uh, pain patterns, uh, but also they have on the opposite side of the coin, they can have low specificity for ST changes on ECG. That means there'll be too many false positives. So we can have 
both false negatives and false positives that run higher for women than they do for men. So um, that's something to watch out for. Uh, previous myocardial infarctions is a really good indicator that someone might have ongoing ischemia that might be silent. Known coronary artery disease, particularly if that's not accompanied by um, uh, patterns of, um, of uh, adverse signs or symptoms, hypertension, obesity, diabetes is a, is a common one because of the risk of peripheral neuropathies, which can then disturb the pain patterns and the sensation of pain. And similarly, smoking is associated with peripheral neuropathies, explaining the absence of pain alcohol and drug abuse, cardiomyopathies, and coronary artery anomalies, which are congenital defects, which I'm not going to talk about here. So the identification or diagnosis, identification being a lower level and then diagnosis being a firmer finding of silent myocardial ischemia. Uh, first of all, to record the risk factors. In, in what I'm saying in this video, the risk factor analysis is, becomes quite important in a lot of, um, a lot of the steps here. Um, now a stress test, um, because of the lack of um, symptoms, a stress test is recommended if, if um, silent myocardial ischemia is suspected and that will need some kind of imaging technique such as a stress echo or other imaging technique. Halter monitor can be useful, although maybe nonspecific in terms of arrhythmias, but can be useful for ST changes to ECG. The treatments, optimal control of risk factors. There it is again. We've got to be focusing on risk factors for this condition. Uh, if the client is being prescribed anti-anginals or anti-thrombogenics or beta blockers or any of combination of those, uh, then uh, without other information you can certainly have in your mind the possibility of silent myocardial ischemia. The interventions, the medical interventions for silent myocardial ischemia uh, um, confined to coronary artery bypass graft and percutaneous coronary interventions. So all of the elements of silent myocardial ischemia with the addition of progression to a symptom-free myocardial infarction are possible. And so it's really um, myocardial, silent myocardial infarction is really uh, ischemia progressing all the way to infarction. For example, plaque rupture, intracoronary thrombosis, resulting in complete or nearly complete uh, coronary artery occlusions. Identification diagnosis of silent myocardial infarction as for silent myocardial ischemia, plus signs or symptoms of infarction, for example, cardiac enzymes and ECG changes, such as ST depression, which might progress to ST elevation, which might eventually uh, result in pathological cues. Although with pathological cues, uh, which I'm going to show you in a, in a minute, the sensitivity can be low for inferior infarctions. So it won't pick up inferior infarctions. Um, now, just going to ST depression first. That's, this is the ST segment where I'm pointing here. And that's where that ST segment has been dragged below baseline is ST depression. Uh, I've gone over this in other videos. I'm not going to spend any time here. ST elevation, which... So uh, this is where the ST segment is above the baseline and ST depression can, can progress over hours, over several hours to ST elevation. Uh, this being ischemia and this going on to pointing towards infarction or more se severe ischemia. And then finally, if the person has had an infarction, then they can, be, they can result in, or that can be left with deep cues more than a quarter the size of the R's, and you can find the uh, ECG criteria for pathological cues. But in this instance, more than 25% of the height of the R is indicative of an old infarction. So this is emerging infarction, uh, acute myocardial infarction, and then old infarction here, 
signified by the path cues. So these arrows here re refer to a time progression from the very early onset of infarction to an old infarction in the, in the person's history. And so when you um, can identify a path cue, for example, I'll show you on the next page, um, that can be quite handy for, um, in fact, uh, I'll talk about that uh, with one of my case studies. So now we come to how exercise professionals can provide a safer exercise service for these clients. Uh, the first thing is uh, risk factors to audit those risk factors, monitor and counsel for better control. There's not much else you can really do here. Uh, for example, obesity, diabetes, smoking, alcohol, drugs. You need an engaged client in relation to their prescribed medications. You want to know what their prescribed medications are and you want to have confidence that they are actually taking those medications according to the prescriptions. And that's what we call an engaged client or an engaged patient, if you like, in relation to a, a doctor. We, I don't like to talk about adherence to medications or compliance with medications. A better terminology to describe that is engaged. I think it's really important that we assess all of our clients' exercise capacity very early in, in um, our services, definitely prior uh, to prescribing exercise and respond to any unexpected signs or symptoms. Now my app, uh, fit.test, fit test, uh, will do that very nicely and I'll show you that at the very last slide. Uh, be an early adopter of single channel ECGs. Now I, I have to insert the word early adopter here because in Australia, and I'm really um, directing this towards an Australian audience um, at, at this point, uh, we don't have readily available single channel ECGs for exercise professionals that um, on in, embedded in smartwatches or smartphones at this stage. But this is certainly emerging and will become available. When they do become available, try and be an early adopter because they'll give you some really good tools in your toolkit. Right now within smartwatches and smartphones, you have the capacity to measure uh, arrhythmias via sudden changes in heart rate. For example, atrial fibrillation shown here with a rapid ventricular rate and also ventricular tachycardia here shown. So uh, right now your smartwatch, smartphone, uh, heart rate detectors will do this quite nicely. It's not perfect, but it's a, a reasonable system. Now this is a very indirect attachment to my to silent myocardial ischemia or silent uh, infarction. So it's very indirect and that's really how we need to follow it at the moment. Now, um, arrhythmias, I just covered that before. So any of these ST depression, ST elevation or pathological Q waves. Now I just want to highlight pathological Q waves for a minute because I have a case, I had a case um, quite a few years ago where on my ECG that I um, attached to this, um, to this lady, it was clear that she had pathological Q patterns on some of the, in fact, they were quite extensive across the anterior leads and some of the lateral leads. So it was showing um, antro, um, well, it was showing a widespread antroseptal infarct, uh, um, previous infarction. And when I questioned her, and by the way, she had obesity and diabetes for all of those years, um, 20 years plus, uh, leading up to when I saw her as an exercise professional. Uh, she confessed to, at one stage, going to bed with uh, just uh, nausea and uh, general sort of malaise, but not, no significant chest pain, went to bed. And um, then uh, when I measured her ECG, and she wasn't a very good attendee at uh, general practitioner or any sort of interactions with doctors, so I was one of the few health professionals that had had any contact with her and I was able to easily see pathological cues on her ECG, widespread path cues. And this, this um, indicated uh, past extensive myocardial infarction that was apparently silent because she simply went to bed and she was lucky enough to survive that event. Uh, she could have easily died at home. 
So these are the references I use, just some websites that I use to put this uh, short presentation together. And I'd emphasize that my app fit test will do a lot of the, th the assessment that you need, obviously not symptoms, but it will do the assessments. And if you get any unusual responses to your exercise testing, one of the things you could be thinking about is the, is the possibility of silent ischemia that I've talked about in this video. So thanks for watching this video and have a great day.